Good morning. My name is Barb Sargent, and I'm here this morning to be with you because Mike Maroney is on uh, holidays. And I'm glad to have Adam with us this morning. And also, I thank you to Ed McLaughlin, who is uh, making sure that uh, the taping and everything is going smoothly. So, uh, welcome, and let us begin with prayer. Let us pray. Most loving and compassionate God, spirit of truth and of love, we come before you in humble adoration, knowing our need for your grace, your mercy, and your strength. Grant us these things by the power of your Holy Spirit. Illuminate our hearts and minds and souls that we might better follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ our Savior and more worthily magnify your most holy name. Help us celebrate what you have done for us and what you have promised to us, both now and forevermore. Amen. And now Adam is going to come and uh, be with us with a song. this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 30 verses 1 through 20. It's a long scripture passage but it has a lot of meaning. David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmen. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod, 
Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and the 600 men with him came to the Bessor Valley, where some stayed behind. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley, but David and the other 400 continued. They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat, part of a cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He ate and was revived, for he had not eaten any food for three days and three nights. David asked him, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I'm an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Carathites, some territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to them. He led David down, and there they were, scattered all over the countryside, eating, drinking, and reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day, and none of them got away, except 400 young men who rode off on camels. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else that had been taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and herds, and his men drove them ahead of the the other livestock, saying, This is David's plunder. This is the word of the Lord. Well, I've entitled this sermon, Be Encouraged. And if we think about the scripture reading that was just read, how could you be discouraged, or how could you be encouraged after that? We are living in a very discouraging time and situations around the world with this COVID-19. The hundreds of thousands of people have been ill. Hundreds of thousands of people have died around the world. The economy is failing. Everything is closed or is opening partially. People have lost their jobs. We're somewhat locked down in our homes. Churches are gradually opening for worship. There's no cure or vaccine for this COVID-19 at this time. Many of us are, con- are continuing to be affected in many ways by this virus. We see that fear of the unknown has gripped the people of the world. People are afraid of death and their, their uncertain future. Even as Christians, we have questions about our, our own lives. We have questions on our own minds. Why is this happening in the world? Is it God's will? When will this outbreak end? Such questions can test our faith in God. Fortunately, as Christians, we have answers to these questions. The Bible is God's word, and we can find answers to all of our questions. From the scripture passage that I read, we will learn the secret of finding encouragement in the most discouraging times. David, a man after God's own heart, lost everything in the battle, but he encouraged himself in the Lord in the most difficult circumstances. As a result, David recovered all that he and his men had lost, and even more, We're going to focus on a few points. Hopefully these points will help us be encouraged during these times. A little bit of background to this disaster. In Samuel, 1 Samuel 27, 
We read that David with his 600 men fled from Saul and hid in the enemy territory of the Palestinians. He thought that he would be safe in Palestine territory. They joined hands with the king of Gath and Achish and settled in a place called Ziklag. David and his army fought and won battles. David gained trust from the king Achish, and the king made David his servant. Life was much better for David and his men for about a year and four months. They were enjoying safety and victory. But then, in chapter 30, disaster strikes. We see that a disaster came upon David and his men. They, le they had left behind their families in Ziklag while they were winning battles and feeling proud of their successes. They had never imagined the dis that disaster would strike them. The Amalekites had raided the Negev and the Ziklag. They had attacked and burned it and taken captive women and everyone around it, both young and old. But they killed none of them but they carried them off and went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and children gone. At this point, we learn that life is uncertain. We may be enjoying success and victories, but immediately we face difficult situations. We never see disasters coming, usually, David never imagined that success and failure both were happening at the same time. Life can throw us challenges for which sometimes and often we are not prepared. The shouts of victory turned into sobs of sorrow. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. Remember, they were strong warriors. But when they returned, their homes were burned down, their families were taken captive. Let me tell you this morning that it's okay to express our feelings. Crying relieves the pain, that pain that's in our heart. God has made us in his image. So God's qualities of anger, grief, Sorrow, love, and joy are all given to us. God understands when we're hurting, when we feel sad, when we feel discouraged. We can be honest in expressing our feelings. It's okay to be honest before God. King David often asked questions to God. He argued with God and he challenged God by asking, why God? would allow certain situations in his life. And if you look at the Psalms, Psalm 22, verse 1, it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? Even though David expressed his anger and anguish before God, God didn't change his love for David, whom God considered a man after his own heart. David also encouraged himself in the Lord. This is a very important point for us to remember. When the world around us comes crumbling down, where do we turn for encouragement? David couldn't turn to his men at that point because they were angry. They had turned against him. And at times we can't turn to anybody else for encouragement either. David decided that it was enough with grief and sadness, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. A time must come when we must stop mourning and feeling despair and sorry for ourselves and turn to the Lord for encouragement. If we continue to dwell on any disaster, we will never be able to strengthen ourselves. How was David able to find strength in the Lord? 
during this difficult time? Well, first of all, he remembered God's faithfulness in the past. When David stopped feeling sorry for himself, he remembered his past victories, victories against the enemies. He remembered that as a boy, he killed Goliath. He remembered also to focus on who God is because our God is almighty, omnipotent, omniscient. He's Jehovah. God is faithful in keeping his promises. God praised and worshiped the Lord. David praised and worshiped the Lord. David was a man of praise and worship. He was able to praise in, mid, in the midst of difficult times. He wrote the Psalms. He wrote Psalm 34, and you can read that, where it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. David also remembered to put his hope in God, to tell himself. In the Psalms again, in Psalm 42 and 43, why my soul are you downcast, it says. Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. David also remembered to seek God's face and guidance in prayer. He spent time in God's presence and he prayed. In Psalm 18, verse 6, he says, In my distress I called upon the Lord. From his temple he heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. David recovered all that was lost. After David encouraged himself in the Lord, David and his 600 men left to attack the Amalekites and rescue their families. The Lord granted them help from an Egyptian slave and they found a group of men who had, who had attacked Ziklag and captured their families. The Amalekites were careless and they were partying to celebrate their victory and their, on their loot. David beat them for nearly 36 hours and killed most of the enemies. David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken and he rescued his two wives. Nothing was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken. Not only did David recover everything that was lost and taken by, away by the enemy, but he also took spoil or loot from the Amalekites because they left their cattle and animals and fled for their wives. He was able to share his loot with his friends and associates. This is what happens when we find our encouragement in the Lord. God not only gives us back what we have lost, but he gives us more blessings. Just like Job, after he was vindicated by the Lord, he got double portion of what he had lost. This pandemic has taken away many things, and we may be discouraged, but when it will be all over, I believe God will give us back the most precious things we have lost, and even more. Let us not be discouraged. Let us turn to God for hope and encouragement in the discouraging times. Remember who our God is, and let's put our hope in the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Father, we thank you for your unconditional and totally accepting love, a love that asks us to do the best we can and embraces us with warmth and encouragement when we stumble and fall. Help us, O oh God, to announce that love to those whom we love. Help us to show that love to all of our friends, neighbors, and family. Lord of light, source of all that is eternal, as you are with us in our hearts and in our minds, open up our lips and our actions when we see the world around us falling apart. Help us to remember that you are in charge of all things, and that your hand has brought us safe thus far, and then help us to encourage others. God, God of mercy and compassion, of strength and of healing, 
the tender touch of your inward spirit upon those who fear and despair this day. Bless with a vision of joy and peace all those who experience loneliness and struggle. Pour out your energy upon those whose light is fading and shine upon all those who sit in darkness. Bless, we pray, too, O God, those in authority over us throughout the nations of this earth. Give them a vision of your kingdom, your kingdom that's to come, and show them how to make it real in their conduct and in their governance. Help us to build a temple that is not made with human hands, but with your hands, and to worship and obey you, the giver of life. Hear, O God, these prayers and all other prayers we offer to you in our hearts at this time. Amen. now go in peace and the Lord bless you with his courage and his faith may he touch you with his strength and his tenderness may he wash you with his mercy and his love and keep us safe in his presence both now and forevermore amen <laughs>